don't sound like y'all are happy about praising your Savior all day long. Amen. I think we can give God a better hand clap than that. Amen. 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 For all he has done for us and doing for us right now. Amen. Amen. As you are standing, let us unite in this historic confession of the Christian faith. And as people... And believers of God, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of the heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under punishment, power, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended to heaven and sit at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from this to come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we come, we come here this morning, Lord, with thanksgiving in our heart. Father God, we thank you for blessing us all week long. Lord, there was no one but you. Father God, we thank you from the bottom of our heart for loving us, Lord, and, and for overlooking all of our faults. Mm and seeing our needs. Father God, we thank you because this morning, Lord, you have renewed mercy over our lives. And for that, we are grateful. So, Lord, we ask now if there's anything that we have done 
that were displeasing to you this week. Father God, that you would forgive us right now. That we may come and be in right standing with you this morning as we worship you, as we bow down to you. Lord, you are so worthy. You are so deserving. Because of you, that's the reason why we can move. And so I ask you this morning, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit will have his way in this church right now. And Lord, that you would touch each and every person that is here or watching online. Lord, touch their hearts right now. Touch their minds right now, Father God. That they will be open and ready to receive your word. For it is by your word, Lord Jesus, that we are able to do things, Lord. It is by your word, Heavenly Father, that we are able to move and have our being. For the Bible said that the word was here in the beginning. Thank you. And that the word became flesh. So we thank you, Father God, for the word. We honor you, Lord Jesus. So have your way in this service today. Touch our mail course. Touch each and every person that they will receive something today, Lord Jesus. That, that they receive a word that they have been searching for all week long. Lord, bless now. Bless now in a special way. In Jesus' name we pray. In the mighty name of the one who is able, let all of God people say amen, 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 and amen. Amen. We'll have a selection by this male course that are assembled behind me. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mel Cors. Amen. Listen, I, I, I have to say this. Amen. Sometimes when I'm listening to music and, and I have a hearing loss, I can't hear the words. Amen. I hear it, but sometimes it's hard for me to figure out the word. And so I look to Danielle. Amen. And Danielle over there, she said, don't do it. Don't let him drive. <laughs> I said, that's what they're saying. Don't let them drive. <laughs> hey, I got it, did. Amen. I, I, I felt like singing it. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I say, sometimes you got to sign it. Amen. But it, 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 that is so true. Don't let them drive. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Mel Course. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning, Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. Just um, three verses of scripture, 28, 29, and 30. Uh, just a scripture reading this morning. Matthew chapter 11, 28, 29, and 30 from the King James Version. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The word of God for the people of God. Oh, thank be unto God. Amen. Amen. We ask now that the officer will come as the usher get prepared. As we ask you to give in the benevolent offering. For we indeed love a cheerful giver here. And we ask now that you would give as they come. Amen, amen, amen. At this time, we we like to open it up for altar call. We started doing altar call probably about four or five weeks ago. And one of the things I wanted to do is make sure that we are consistent in giving people an opportunity to come to the altar to pray. I believe in the power of prayer, amen. I, I, I know that prayer works. And so we want to give you an opportunity to come and kneel before the altar 
to lay your concern at the altar that God will not only hear your prayer, but he will receive your prayer and he'll do something about your concern. So we ask that you would come now. If you will make your way down, for those that would like to come, you can come down your own way. As we continue to pray, we add Ms. Glenda Lyons' name to our prayer list. As many of you know, she lost her brother, Brother Daniel Kennebrew, this week. And so we pray for her. Also, I did not know until yesterday that she had lost her sister-in-law. Dr. Orchard Lion Brown. So she's been going through a lot, amen? So we ask that you would pray for her and so many others that are on our prayer list. We thank God for Brother Ellis being with us today, amen? How God continue to touch and heal his body. Thank God for Miss Creamer, amen? being here today, how God has continued to touch and heal her as well, and so many others. I have a co-worker at work. She has been teaching for a number of years, and even now while she's teaching, she's been battling stage four cancer. And so we pray for her this morning, but about I guess about six months ago, she made me this little Bible marker that said, God is just a prayer away. And that is for someone that may be struggling, that God is always just a prayer away. So let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that you're so near to us, Heavenly Father, that all we have to do is just open up our mouths and speak to you. Father God, you know each and every person's name on their prayer list and those that may not be listed. You know their heartaches, Heavenly Father. You know what they're dealing with. So we ask that you will continue to touch and 
move in a mighty way in their lives, Lord. And so many others, Heavenly Father, that may be going through right now. Lord, I ask that you would touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Touch my Aunt Gertie Mae Adam, Lord, as she continued to go through. And so many others. Father God, we're calling on you right now. We're standing on your word right now. Touch all the bereaved families that have lost loved ones. Guide them. Help them to get through this moment in time. And Lord, I thank you for each and every person that's in this sanctuary. Continue to enrich their lives as well. Thank you, Father God. In your name we pray. And all of God, people say amen, 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 and amen. Selection by this male course, amen. Thank you, Mayor of course, as we get prepared for tithing, offering as the officer go, let me say thank you to this church. Amen. 
thank you for last week. Amen. It was a blessing indeed. I was shocked. I was amazed and, and we were just certainly blessed. And so I thank you to Ryan and Miss Nikki. Thank you so very much for all of your work and 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 just heading up the pastor appreciation and to Greater Mount Calvary Baptist Church and Reverend Shield and to my good friend Chris Collins, to everyone that really truly it made a difference. You know, um I know in life, I'd never be able to repay people. That's what I told them this morning on Sunday School for everything that you are doing and have done for me and my family. But I can say thank you. And, and I just want you to know we appreciate everything. And it was amazing to see how many people showed up at three. We really didn't know. We hadn't done an afternoon program, you know, in a while like that. And so that was amazing. And then Vacation Bible School to Miss Annie and her committee, to all of you that, that, that work, teach, talk, um, showed up, set up, Brother Colin Cook, hamburgers and hot dog. Amen. <laughs> Did you burn the hot dog? Yeah. Amen. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. Look, 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 look cause it's funny. I know we got to move on, but I'll tell Miss Deborah, I said, we just going to boil the hot dog. Brother Collins said, well, now, you know, my wife like them burnt. <laughs> so we end up, I guess they end up burning a hot dog, but thank you all so very much. And and really, to the kitchen committee all week long, Miss Emma, Miss Deborah, all of those work, y'all y'all did awesome. It was just a great day. It was a great day. And so I really appreciate you all so very much from the bottom of my heart for everything. So at this time, we ask if you would please stand. If you would stand, stand, face the wall, be led around by the ushers, bring in your tithes and special offering if you would make your way forward. Amen. Oh, bless me. Amen, amen. Amen, amen. Selection by this mail course, amen.
Father, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your spirit being in this house right now. Use me right now, Heavenly Father, in a mighty way to preach your word, teach your word to all that have gathered here today. I thank you, Father God, for your word always fall on good ground and it never return void. So thank you for this awesome responsibility of teaching and preaching. In your name we pray, and all of God people say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20, looking at verse 1. And don't worry about the media team. I just changed my text, so y'all okay? Amen. But Second Chronicle chapter 20, looking at verse 1. And it reads as follow. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them other beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. For a topic on today, I simply want to use when the battle chooses you. When the battle chooses you. There are times in our lives when we feel 
like we are up against what seemed like an insurmountable enemy. Things appear to be hopeless, and we are in a fight that we think we cannot possibly win. It's during times like these that we need to remember one very important thing, and that is that the battle belongs to the Lord. You and me are involved in a spiritual warfare that is unseen in the realms. God's word makes it clear that we will have times of trouble. But the Bible also makes it clear that no matter what we may be facing, that God has a plan to help us. And this morning, you may be struggling with fear. You may be struggling with a bad habit or relationship issue or even threatened by a severe disease. Whatever it is, when you give your battle to the Lord, you take your position for victory. But what does victory look like or what does the battle look like when it chooses you? <laughs> One day, just when everything is going well, you know how it is when you feel like you just figure something out. When you get in your groove, so to speak, and you know that you're, you're hitting all of the cylinder, you're in rhythm, and then you get hit with some bad news. The Bible says in, in 2 Chronicles 20 and 1 that it happened after this. That's why, that's why I changed my text. Because it doesn't actually tell you what to put in this, but that means that it happened after whatever you experienced in your life. And most of the time that the battle comes, it's going to come after you have had an emotional high or a victory of something. And the Bible said that it happened after this, that the people of Moab and the Ammon and all of those came up against the battle of Jehoshaphat. What am I saying? He didn't go out looking for a fight, but a fight came to him. Good God Almighty. And every now and then, you don't have to worry about trouble finding you. Good God Almighty. Sometimes you can find trouble, but sometimes that trouble will come and you're going to have to fight. And you're saying, Lord, I ain't ready for this fight because that's what happened to Jehoshaphat. The Bible tells me that now there's some people getting ready to attack him. And if you read the commentary, it tells me that they were 25 miles out away. He didn't have time to develop a strategy. He did not have time to build an armed forces to mount a defense. He did not have time to rethink the occasion that led up to the event. It was coming so fast and so quickly that, that he didn't have really time to even react to it. Have you ever gotten a phone call, good God Almighty, or a text message? And at that moment, during that time, you realize that whatever is happening is sneaking up on you, and you got to get ready right now. It's during that moment that you got to deal with the situation right now. You don't have time to Google it. You don't have time to read it. You don't have time to call mama and daddy. You don't have time to go pawn your title to your car to borrow the money. No, I got to deal with it right now. This has caught me off guard. I don't know if it's real, but Lord, I need your help right now. Has anybody had a battle that just all of a sudden sneaked up on you and knocked you off your horse? I come, I come to preach to some real folk this morning that have dealt with some real issues. Every now and then you can't get prepared for what's coming your way. Ah, you don't even really know what's going on. It hits you so fast. You're beginning to doubt yourself. I don't know, but there's something about a surprise attack that would drive you into the presence of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Jehoshaphat is surprised. He didn't know that trouble was coming. One thing I do know is that when trouble comes, and it's coming, and we know that we're facing something that we've never faced before, I got enough sense in my mind to know how to seek out the Lord. I don't need a doctor degree to tell me how to fall down on my knees and ask God for help. So that's my first point this morning, that when the Bible chooses you, you got to run directly to God. Jehoshaphat received the news that a vast army was coming to attack. The Bible said initially he feared. But I like it because he didn't allow fear to paralyze him. He feared. And if you look at the application Bible, it says he set himself. In other words, he feared, then he set himself. And when he set himself, he set himself to seek the Lord. In other words, it's okay because most of us, when we get hit with something, we, we, we feel fear. But that fear should push us to seek the Lord. And in this situation, his fear pushed him past what he was feeling to determine to seek God for comfort and guidance. He knew that only God could give him a plan that would mean success. Jehoshaphat set the example by his personal devotion. The Bible said that he would call upon all of the people. He would call upon all of the people to pray. And we can expect God to do great things when his people, and especially the pastor, the leaders, seek him. See, there ain't nothing more than just me asking you to seek God. But I also got to seek God with you. The word in the Bible says seek. And in the Hebrew language, seek really means a sense of worship. It means that while I'm worshiping, that I'm discovering God's will. <laughs> and I found out that a lot of times, the reason why we don't understand God's will for us is because we don't take the time to worship to seek God. Good God Almighty. Lord, I got to seek you. See, that, that's when I come to church. Good God Almighty. I know y'all see me shouting and raising my hand. But while I'm praising God in this sanctuary, I'm asking God to give me his will. Tell me what it is that you want me to do. Good God. Tell me how you want me to go. Tell me how you want me to walk. Is there anybody, good God Almighty, you came in the house today not to see who was here, but to seek the will of God. Jehoshaphat, he had a higher trust in God than in his military resources. Sometimes we get worried because we look at our resources. And when all of our resources are dried up, we get nervous. But if you do like Jehoshaphat, seek God. Look at God and what he can bring. Not about the resources. Jehoshaphat, he called for a fast. And a fast is nothing more than abstaining from food and drink for a period of time. Jesus explained to us in Mark 9 that prayer and fasting together were a source of significant spiritual power. It isn't as if prayer and fasting makes us worthy than someone else, but it's that prayer and fasting draw us closer to the heart of God. Ah, and when you pray and you fast, not only does it draw you closer to the heart of God, 
but now it puts you in line with what God is getting ready to do. See, fasting is a powerful expression, my brother and sister, of that I'm totally dependent upon him. And I didn't understand that when I was fasting when I was younger because all I was doing was what my mama and my daddy told me, that I had to give up something that I love. But they didn't tell me that when I got, gave up what I love that I could depend on Jesus. And I start about to tell somebody, try fasting and praying. If you don't have any power, good God Almighty, try giving up something, good mighty, that you can depend totally on him. But I love what Jehoshaphat did next. <laughs> the Bible says that he prayed to God in front of the assembly. If you look at verse 5, you will see that he prayed, watch this, in the house of God and before his court. And here's what he said, if, if you want me to read it. He said, O oh Lord God of our Father, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdom of the nation? And in your hand is there not power and might so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God <laughs> who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendant of Abraham, your friend, forever? But I like what he says around verse 11 and 12. He says, you haven't given us to inheritance, O oh our God. Will you not judge them? He, he said, for we have no power against this great multitude that is coming up against us, nor do we know what to do. But watch this. But our eyes. Good God Almighty, that's where I'm going, Johnny. Are fixed uh, upon you, good God Almighty. Oh, uh, if you know how to go directly to God, then the second thing you need to know where your source of your help is coming from. I think if I could use the whole folk, they say, I look to the hill for which cometh my help. When your eyes are upon God, things begin to fall in order. Is there anybody, good God Almighty, say, I know where my source of my help comes from. Jehoshaphat says, in essence, we're looking to you. God, we don't know what to do. I don't know why they're coming up against me. But I do know where I can look. I believe you're going to help me. I know you're going to help me. It's something on the inside that tells me, Miss Judy, he's going to help me. If anybody ever been like that, good God Almighty, you called on God, you got the bad news, but me, Nikki, you know in your heart that God's going to help you. Lord, I'm just standing here in the need of a prayer. I don't know when, I don't know how, but I know you're going to do. Is there anybody in the house? Do I got four people, good God Almighty, that know that God is going to help? I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't know how long, but God is going to help me. Yeah. Uh, uh, he recognized that God got all power. Uh, he said, Lord, you're powerful over everything. Uh, he recognized God great work in the past. Look at the text. He looked at God and what he did in the past on behalf of the people. And he got it clear. And I'm trying to give it to you, that if God had done great things for people in the past, ah, he could prevail to do great things right now. <laughs> Jehoshaphat said, if you did it for them, I know you're going to do it for me. <laughs> he remembered, he said, God, you didn't allow us to invade these people when we came over from Egypt to the promised land. And I know that may sound strange, but let me explain it to you. What Jehoshaphat was saying is since God did not, did not allow Israel 
to destroy those people, then it would be just if God would not allow them to destroy Judah. <laughs> he said, God, I'm giving you your theology back. If you wouldn't allow us to destroy them, then I don't. You ain't going to allow them to destroy us. <laughs> somebody, somebody about to read the Bible. <laughs> and what he's saying is, he said, God, I'm looking at you. In other words, here's the king. Because everybody figured that the king got the answer. And I know sometimes you like to call on Pastor McDaniel for the answer. But every now and then, I don't have the answer. But I know the one that got the answer. And every now and then, I just stand and look to the answer. I just confess, Lord, I don't know. But you know. And all I got to do is just stand and trust in his word. I, I got to go to my seat. My time is up. But one, run directly to God. Two, know the source of your help. But three, take your position. Because the Bible says in 16 and 17 that when the battle comes, get God Almighty, all you got to do is take your position. And your position is called praise. Because the Bible says that tomorrow go down against them. That's what God tells them. And they will surely come. He said, but you're going to find them, good God Almighty, at the end of the brook at the wilderness of Jeruel. He said, you need not, watch this, to fight in this battle. I'm trying to preach to somebody today. But watch the Bible. The Bible said, position yourself and stand and see the salvation of the Lord. I need somebody in holy. I need somebody on line to just position yourself. Just stand and see the position, the salvation of the Lord. And then he said, do not fear. Don't be confused because when you go out against them, good God Almighty, I'm going with you. And I thought about to tell somebody, whatever you're battling with, don't you be afraid because God goes with you. And when the Lord goes with you, that's when success happens. Is there anybody in the house? You go stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And stand still means that you don't open your mouth. I don't read nowhere in the text. He said that you open your mouth, but you be quiet and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I never will forget. One year, I was in college, and I was having myself a good time. And all of a sudden, Brother Liddell, in my foolish mind, I went out, and I was going to celebrate New Year's Eve. And I went out, and I started celebrating with all my fraternity brothers. Well, let me get to the end of the story. I came home. I was drunk and messed up. I got so drunk that I got sick. And I went to my wife. I said, baby, you got to stay up. I feel like I'm dying. She said, no, you're not. She said, I told you not to go. She said, I'm going on to sleep. And here I was, Brother Willie, I was in the floor. I was crying. I was crying out to God, Lord, help me. And all I could think of, all I could think of, Nene, was that song that I learned as a little kid in me thinking. And it said, the Lord, he's able to help you get through him. The Lord, he'll fight your battle. If you just stand still, the Lord, he's able to fight your battle. And the more I sung that song, the better I felt. I kept saying, God, you are able. You are able to fight my battle. If I just stand still and let the Lord have his way, he will, he will, he will see about me. Is there anybody? 
have made a mistake, but you thank God that he still fight your battle. You've been a fool. You a sad stuff, but he still fight your battle. Is there anybody glad about it? Say yeah! I'm so glad that he fought my battle. Even when I messed up, he was still there for me. I wasn't right. I wasn't perfect. But God said, this is not your battle. In other words, it's not your time, brother. I got it. You just need to trust me. I don't know who that for, but you got to learn how to trust him. You got to stand still. God is not limited like we are. He's standing there with open arms, and he's telling you, come on. He's telling you, I got you. Lay all of your burden on me. That's what he's saying. That's for someone today. The battle has chosen you. But you know how to take your position. And win. Because the Bible said the praises went up. And they start praising God. You got to learn how to praise God. When you're going through. Get your song. And keep singing that song. Until you make it through. That's how you do it. God is able. He's able to carry you through. It ain't anybody come. Church doors open. Is that one? On solid ground. It makes me shout hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus Thank you, G. Yeah! Is that anybody? Good God, am I? You can stand and sing with us. Thank you, Jesus. Put your hands together, amen. 
Give God a shout of praise. Give God a shout of praise in this house for everything that he is doing in your life, for how he is making a way out of no way. You ought to put your hands together and give God a shout of praise because he's worthy, he's able. Yeah! Thank you, Lord. Yeah! Mm. Thank you. Thank you, too. This awesome praise team and male course. Thank you to this church. As we get prepared to leave this place, I pray and hope that you have a blessed week. I'm full now, amen. I'm full, Reverend Colin. Something about being in God's presence that make me full and appreciative that is allowing me another day's journey, amen, to get it right. So, real important, and I got to announce this, but we have two more Sundays, the 24th and the 30th, where we're collecting the $150. We need it by the 30th. We, we really cannot extend the deadline because we have to pay the bus, um, pay the bus off. So we are asking if you're going, it's $150 for the seat. Now, those that are on the praise team, Pastor McDaniel paid for your seat, amen. So all you got to do is pay for your hotel. But everyone else, we need you to pay $150 for your seat. And we are trying to get it all taken care of by that 31st of July, which put us two weeks out. And so we really need you to come through. Now, I know some have already paid, and I say thank you so very much. Um, Bible study will resume in August. It'll be after the annual conference. Um, the annual conference is the 24th, 25th, and 26th. So next Sunday, I would preach, and then I would take my trip to the annual conference. Amen. So pray for me as I travel to Gainesville, Georgia, next Sunday. And we will be there for three days. And then we'll see what thus says the Lord. Amen. But I ain't worried. Amen. I'm not dismayed. Amen. I know what God already showed me. Amen. And there's more work to do here. Amen. So our Virginia trip is 11th through the 13th. Please, 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 please. Remember the 11th through the 13th, the church will be out of town. So that second Sunday in August, we will not meet here. And I keep making that statement because I know someone's still going to show up and say, what happened to the church? Amen. <laughs> I know it. I'm telling y'all, we're going to put a big old note on the door. Amen. Watch us on Facebook. And so if you cannot travel to Virginia, we're going we're gonna to take the little camera and all that stuff, and we're going to set it up there so that you can watch the service in Virginia. We have a whole, we have a whole lot of things planned for you, itinerary for Virginia. We're leaving Friday morning at 5 a.m. sharp. Amen. We will eat lunch at around 12. So bring your snacks. Bring your snacks with you. Amen. One carry-on bag. <laughs> I know it's going to be hard. All right. <laughs> Listen, we, we might give y'all two, amen, that you can put on the bus. But I'm talking about carrying on the bus. So we know that you want to have luggage, amen, put it under the bus, amen. You all right, Miss Judy, amen. But now that don't mean you bring five or six, amen, amen. <laughs> yeah. Look, look, but please, 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 uh, we'll talk more about that. But bring your snacks, amen, bring your snacks. Because I'm figuring that from five to around ten, y'all going to be sleeping. And so we, when you wake up, normally you'd be hungry. So at 12, we'd eat. So um, be prepared for that. And again, thank you to the church. Y'all have been rocking with us for five years. And I love every moment of it. I'm just, man, y'all are special. Amen. I wish that I had, I wish I was a billionaire. Because I would give everybody in this church a million dollars. I'm serious. 
Um, I, I, <laughs> I promise to God, I just want to bless everybody in this church financially. That's my prayer, that God will open up a window. Amen. 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 I'm serious. Y'all about to be glad. God, no, he don't, don't let me win nothing. Amen. That's why I don't even play the lottery, because I would be in trouble. I would be broke, because I would give it all away. Because that's what I want. I just want to bless people. I love to see people happy. I love to see people being successful. That's what makes me happy, is you being happy. And so I thank God for you. And thank God for my wife. Amen. 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 That joker just turned 50. Amen. I told you, a half a century. <laughs> Don't let him run. <laughs> He's driving. <laughs> hey, but no, and the reason why I say that because I just want to tell, I want her to stand up and tell everybody, thank you for the birthday wish. You want to do that, baby? Uh, <laughs> amen, amen. All right, I'm, I'm out of the doghouse now, ain't I? I'm still in the doghouse. Let us go, amen. The Lord is good, amen. <laughs> Let us stand, amen. Let us stand. We thank y'all for everything. Doxology.